Today we're going to be talking about fishes of men. Tell the person next to you, fishes of men. We have all been called not to just follow Jesus in terms of uh, making sure our spiritual growth will be uh, growing in the likeness of Jesus Christ. But we are also called to actually reach out to the people around us to fish them so that they will also come to know uh, Jesus. If you believe, say amen. amen. Okay, with that, let me just ask you to open the Bible from the book of Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. 11 together. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Let's pray. If you want to become a good fisher of men, you need to, the first one, obey God's command. You need to obey God's command. I'm going to read to you again verse 5 from the book of Luke 5. And Simon answering said unto him, Master. Now this was the time when Jesus said, throw again your net. Okay. But Simon was trying to explain to Jesus, we've done that the whole night and we got nothing. Okay. But Simon continued by saying, well, because you said so, then I'll do it anyway. We will do it again. We will throw the net again. And we all know the story after that. They got a lot of fish. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 1 says, therefore, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments always. It's very clear. The moment we receive Jesus Christ, the moment we follow Jesus, we must obey his word. We must obey all his commands. And that is the reason why I will never get bored in telling everybody that the Ten Commandments, it's still there. It's still very much valid. Okay. In fact, the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 20, highlighted that in regards of our relationship with Jesus Christ. See, a lot of churches, a lot of Christians, a lot of pastors even, have a tendency to focus just on Matthew 28, 19. Make disciples of all the nations, baptize them, and that's it. Well, it's good because when you focus on that, certainly the number of church members will grow. And unfortunately, there's quite a lot of people who's willing to do whatever it takes to make sure that the number of people in the church will grow. But that's not what God is looking for. God is looking to increase the number of souls in heaven later, if you believe, say amen. There's going to be a lot of people that keep on going to church nowadays. Around us, I pray, not one of us, but there's going to be a lot of people that we see in church that we will not see in eternity. Why? Because they fail to continue from Matthew 20, 19 to continue to Matthew 28, 20. That says, make sure you teach them. Those who have been baptized, those Christians, make sure you teach them to obey all the commandments of God. That's how important it is for us to obey God's commands, church. And if you want to put it back into our daily life now, being a fisher of men, being a Christian who's trying to get people to come and follow Jesus, it's very simple. How would you expect someone to obey our God, Jesus Christ, if you and I don't obey God? Now I'm telling you, believe in Jesus Christ. But I share to people that I don't really believe in Jesus. And I tell you, do good to others because that's what Jesus did. But then I don't actually do that. Forgive because Jesus did. But then I don't actually do that. Follow all the Ten Commandments. Of course, as I said, we can never be perfect until Jesus returns the second time. But we push ourselves to do whatever that we can do. And even when we fail, God is the one that will help us. 
But if we don't have the effort at all to try to do all those Ten Commandments, church, how would you expect to tell people to learn about the fact that Moses went up to the mount and he came down and brought practically the first tablets in the world, long before we have our tablets here now? Two tablets with the Ten Commandments. How would you expect for people to also follow you to obey those commandments if we don't actually do those commandments? So it's fairly simple, church. You want to become a good fisher of man, you obey his command. Because there's no chance for you to fish anyone to follow Jesus, to obey Jesus when they see that you yourself do not obey Jesus. The book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now I know this is talking about money, but I believe when we're talking about no one can serve two masters, this Bible verse is reminding you and me as well, in the sense that we cannot serve God, Jesus, and other things. And it's not just about idols in the form of false gods. It's also idols in many different forms. This one is mentioning about mammon, which is money, but also about our lifestyle. When we talk about obey God's commands, it's not just one part of the Bible, but it's the whole Bible church. It's the whole word of God. We must obey every day. A lot of Christians, they become so holy on Sunday. And then on Monday to Saturday, they just forget about everything. But this Matthew 6.24 is reminding you and me exactly that. We cannot live in those two worlds. That on Sunday, we will obey God, and then on Monday to Saturday, we will obey our lifestyle. Okay. You, you can't do that. If you want to be a good fisher of men, you got to show that you truly obey God. Every word of God, you obey. Now see, the word of God is our bread of life. If you believe, say Amen. And I want to remind you that despite the fact that when we go to bakery these days, there's so many different types of bread. I love bread so much, you all know that. There's so many different types of bread. But I'm talking about bread in the sense of the essence of life. It's carbs. It's what we need to, 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 to live, to have energy. Okay? So when it comes to bread, I'm talking about the basic bread actually. Now, the Word of God is the bread of life. So when you take the bread of life, the Word of God, it's meant to be exactly that. It's meant to be a daily bread that you take every day for you to survive. Whether you have time to eat your bread with some ham or cheese, that's okay. But the bread has to be there. Or you don't have time, you just grab some piece of bread and you run, trying to catch a bus, and you just quickly eat on the way. That's also okay, but you need that regardless. The Word of God, God's commandment, is that type of daily bread, not some fancy cake that you have on a special vacation, that you have when you have an Easter celebration or Christmas celebration. See, that's the thing. There's so many Christians nowadays around the world, they're becoming Christmas Christians or Easter Christians, so they always rush to the churches during these holidays. I still don't have any problem with that for as long as they keep on reading the Word of God every day. But what's even worse than that is that nowadays there's a lot of Christians that not only they rush to the church every Christmas and Easter, but they actually rush to the church every Sunday. Every Sunday, yeah, 
Monday to Saturday, no word of God. That's not what God wants, church. God wants Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all you consume word of God. And then begin again with Monday, Tuesday, and so on again. That's the reason why it is very important for us to make sure that we always obey God's commands. If we want to be a good fisher of men, you can't just declare you're a good fisher of men just because you're a Christian, just because you have been following Jesus for so many years, just because you always go to church, even just because you remember all of these Bible verses, yet you don't do these verses. The word obey means you actually do these verses, not simply read it. In order for us to be a good fisher of men, we must be a good Bible verses doers. Then you will become a good fisher of men. When you actually get the fish, and let me highlight this. When you say about get the fish, it's not just about getting people to go to church once again. When you get the fish that you will meet together in the class of glory like that. Not get the fish that come to church and then they will leave God eventually. No. So in order for us to become good fisher of men, once again, we must obey God. And when you, we obey God, it's not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. If you believe, say amen. Yeah. The second point. Let's move on. If you want to become a good fisher of men, you need to be cooperative. You need to have the ability to work together. This is very uh, common, actually, in regards of any types of work, right? Ever more so when it comes to fisher of men. Let me just read again verse 7 from Luke chapter 5. The Bible says, And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. So Simon realized that he couldn't handle this. He needed help from other people. And that's exactly what we need to have if we want to be successful in fishing for men, for souls. We need to be able to work together with other people rather than Envying what other people are doing. Okay? The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verses 9 to 10 says, Two are better than one because they have good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he fallen. For he hath not another to help him up. So, there's a benefit when you work together with people because, you know, it's easier, it helps you out a lot, and then um, when you can't make it, somebody else will be able to make it, okay? It's very evident in what we do here every Sunday. Sometimes when we already schedule people, you'll never know about, you know, uh, our schedule because most of us, the nature of our being here in Macau is because of work. So work has to come first, okay? Sometimes... We already say yes, and then turns out we receive a message from the boss. You must come in. So we quickly contact. Pastor, Pastora, we cannot make it, and so on. And this is still possible for us to do what we're doing every Sunday is because we also have other people. May not be the best, but the fact that we work together helps out a lot. None of us is even an expertise in music. Yet, yeah, we survive. Yet, yeah, the worship is still beautiful because indeed, worship is not about music, but it's about what we give to God. We don't come for the music, we come for Jesus. So regardless how it goes, we don't come to see the seats being filled up because it looks good, of course. We must push ourselves to see the seeds being filled up, filled up, but not because it looks good, but because 
God wants us to fill up heaven and empty hell. Back to the second point. We must be able to work together. Not fouling one another, not slandering one another, and not stealing fish from other ponds. Because unfortunately, that's what a lot of churches do these days. To become good fisher of men, let us become better in cooperating with people. Be cooperative, meaning not just work together, but also respect other churches, respect other leadership as well. The third one is, uh, if you want to become a good fisher of men, don't fear, because God helped. Acts 2.14 tells you when we have Peter was no longer afraid. This Peter, used to be called Simon, he even denied Jesus. But in the book of Acts, on the day of the Pentecost, he stood up and he preached. He was no longer afraid. The book of Acts 19.11 says, And God brought special miracles by the hands of Paul. So church, don't be afraid. Because God does want to use you and me as fishers of men. Don't be afraid. God wants you and me to be a fisher of men and to be a good one as well. The book of Psalm 37 verses 23 to 24 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Yes, when you are fishing, for souls, you will find challenges, certainly. But the Bible is here, amen. God, Emmanuel, he is always going to be with you and I. Every step of the way, church. And I'm not saying that those steps will all be easy. Some of them will be very hard. But the highlight here is the fact that those steps, whether it's easy or hard, are ordered by the Lord. Arranged by God. You know, there's a song here in, in Indonesian with this Bible verse. Bumilka will remember. The steps of the good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Tangannya with his hand, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Though he may fall, he shall not be cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. And the amazing thing about this church, it's not just once. Oh, you have it as well? Yeah. Seems like. Oh. <laughs> Or maybe it's, it's, uh, it's, is it based on the same Bible verse? Oh no. Ah. Now the amazing thing about this, it's forever. He will do this until the end. Matthew 28, 20 says, He will be with you and me until the end. Until the end. So He will order all our steps until the end. Until we don't need steps anymore here on earth. We can be reunited there and singing Echo Holy together on, on, in heaven. The book of Psalm 23. These are all for us, church. If you want to become a good fisher of men, don't be afraid because Psalm 23 gives us all this. We shall not want. We lack nothing. He restores our soul. He guides us. He leads us. We fear not. He is with us. He comforts us and He anoints you and me to do whatever it takes to win souls for the glory of His name. The book of Psalm 23 verse 6 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Once again, it's forever. It's not just once. It's forever. For the days of our life, goodness and mercy will follow, church. Okay? So fear not. God has more than enough for you and me to sustain you and me. But there is a secret here at the end. If you want that goodness and mercy to follow you for all the days of your life, then you have to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Never leave Him at all. Because the moment you leave Him, then you will forfeit all these benefits. For as long as you are in His house, then all the goodness and mercy that will follow you. Amen? And the fourth one, tell the person next to you the last one. 
If you want to become a good fisher of men, then you must self-sacrifice. Leave everything behind. I'll read to you again from verse 11. And when they had brought their ships to land, they, they forsook all and followed him. Simon and the friends did that. They forsook everything and they followed Jesus Christ. If you want to become a good fisher of men, you must learn to sacrifice and leave things that need to be left behind. Matthew 19, 21 says, Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. The book of Hebrew 11, 24, 27 tells the story of Moses. How Moses also left everything behind. He could have just died being prince of Egypt, but he didn't. He knew that he was Hebrew. He knew that he worshipped God the Creator, not the idols in Egypt. So he left, and he came back still when God told him to come back, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. Okay? You know who else sacrificed? Jesus. Now, Moses was not a real prince. He was adopted. He was an adopted prince. He was not born royal. Okay? Um, Jesus is prince of peace. Jesus is king of kings. Moses did not really belong in the palace. He was adopted. But Jesus, not only that he belonged in the palace, the heavenly kingdom, he's the creator of in the beginning, it's the Word, and the Word becomes flesh, Jesus Christ, which is why we're celebrating this month. But see, Jesus, who actually belongs in heaven, who actually has all the rights in heaven, who actually naturally, royally, heavenly royal, He forsook everything, came down to earth for you and me, so that we can be fished. We can be His fish. And so I believe he deserves to have our sacrifice as well. None of us has to go to the cross like he did. So the least that we can do is sacrifice a bit of our time, maybe a bit of money even, you know, a bit of energy. And not just talking about helping in church. Even when you go out and you can just tell people about Jesus. God will help the book of Luke 9 24 says, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. So don't worry, church. When you sacrifice for God, there's a place in you. Your crown awaits you in heaven. And those who lose our life because of his name, you will get. You want to be a good Fisher of men, it's not about the training really. Yes, the training is important. But the main important, important thing is you obey God. You do what He tells you to do. And you follow these guidelines. The training is important. It's true. But if you remember, as I close, the disciples were trained by Jesus Christ Himself. Correct? Three and a half years of ministry of Jesus Christ. He walked with him, slept together, ate together, spent time with all these disciples. But what did Jesus do before he left? They were very well trained. I mean, far from you and me, church, it's what we do is just be passed down. And even not from the real person who wrote the Bible, we just read it try to interpret it, and we try to teach. Okay? But these were those people who were together with Jesus. Very well trained. Yet, yeah. Jesus said, you remember? Wait. Wait. In Jerusalem. For the Holy Spirit. Only after the Holy Spirit was given, that's when they could go. And that's when they became the Jesus. See, they were fishermen already. They were fishers of men already. 
with Jesus here, okay? And if they wanted to go by themselves, they could. But Jesus wanted them to be good fishers of men, not just so subtle. Jesus wanted them to be powerful fishers of men. And so that's why I said, training is good. What I train you is of course important. But nevertheless, what we learn here today is much more important than any training that we could ever get. Okay? So let us push ourselves to become fishers of men and push ourselves to win more souls.